right now on five on your side at 10. Biden bows out the president's pivotal decision. He will not seek a second term. Now, as Democrats face a leadership vacuum, the race is on to fill the void. Good evening. I'm Mike Bush. This news comes after many Democrats called for the 81 year old president to step down. He has officially endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris for the job. NBC's Alice Parr has more on the repercussions this move will have on the presidential race. Tonight, President Biden's half century political career is coming to a close as a new and uncharted chapter begins in a campaign like no other. Following weeks of pressure from fellow Democrats to step aside after that disastrous debate, the president announcing in a statement posted on X, quote, while it has been my intention to seek reelection, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. One of the president's closest allies, Senator Chris Coons, reacting. He has always put our country first. He has an incredible legacy of service and leadership. Mr. Biden then endorsed his vice president, Kamala Harris, for the nomination. As the party scrambles to change course before next month's Democratic National Convention, with just four months until the November election. We'll put on full display our agenda for the American people and do what is necessary uh, in order to leave that convention unified, get the job done. In her own statement, Vice President Harris thanking the president for his service and his endorsement and saying it's her intention to earn and win this nomination and unite the Democratic Party to defeat former President Trump as the race hits an historic reset. We just don't know what anything's going to happen. Propelling the nation into unknown territory. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Biden is the first president to drop out of a re-election bid since Lyndon Johnson in 1968. He says he'll address the nation this week. Former President Donald Trump also responding. He tells NBC News, quote, Joe Biden is the worst president in the history of the United States by far. It goes on to say, we will fix what he has done. The delegates President Biden won in the primaries do not automatically transfer to Vice President Harris with his endorsement. Laura Barczewski is live downtown with reaction from local delegates headed to the Democratic National Convention in Chicago next month. Laura. Mike, those Missouri delegates say they were fully prepared to back President Joe Biden at the DNC, but, that, but now they say it's time to shift and unite around whoever gets the official nomination. As President Joe Biden decides to end his campaign for a second term, Missouri delegates ready to support him at the Democratic National Convention highlight what they call a tremendous job as president. He has uh, gotten infrastructure passed. He's gotten the climate change passed. He brought us out of the pandemic successfully. We've had the longest uh, job growth in the history of the country in over 50 years. Um, he's actually doing a selfless act on behalf of the American people. But now their eyes are locked in on what's next. According to DNC rules, a new Democratic nominee could be selected beforehand by virtual vote, or it could be an open convention and actually be decided on the world stage. State Senator Doug Beck is headed to the DNC for the first time as a delegate. And I think it needs to be as open, as transparent as possible uh, as we go forward. Uh, I know the president has endorsed uh, Vice President Harris, but uh, at the end of the day, I think the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be listening to voters of Missouri. St. Louis Alderwoman Daniela Velasquez says she would support Kamala Harris Harris if she selected but stressed focusing on a common goal that hasn't changed. Our focus is really on defeating Republicans and defeating Trump. We know what that looks like. We saw what it looked like in 2016 and based on his comments at the RNC it's going to be 10 times worse. We won't have Muslim bans. There was mass deportation. The chair of the St. Louis County Democratic Central Committee Nelson Mitten says now is the time for Democrats to unite. Policies don't change. Democrats support the same things. We are going to move forward on those and I believe there will be plenty of time to bring the party together. All three of those delegates I spoke with are headed to the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. That takes place August 19th through 22nd. Reporting live downtown, Laura Barczewski, five on your side. And tonight we're hearing from the two Democrats running for Missouri's first congressional district. Wesley Bell says as a fellow prosecutor, he's a big fan of the vice president, but stopped short of endorsing her. I think she's a very sharp and talented, astute um, in, uh, uh, person. I think she would do a great job, but there are other Democrats I think would also do a great job. 
Congresswoman Cori Bush is standing behind the VP saying, quote, it's clear to me that Vice President Kamala Harris has the vision to carry this legacy forward, defeat Donald Trump, and I unequivocally endorse her for President of the United States. The senior senators from both Missouri and Illinois are responding. Senator Josh Hawley calls this a desperate attempt by Democrat elites to cling to power. He did that during an appearance on Fox News tonight. Joe Biden's no longer useful to them. They're trying to find their next puppet. And we're going to have several weeks of auditioning for who that puppet's going to be. But at the end of the day, Republicans know who our candidate is, Donald Trump, who's not a puppet, and that's why he's going to win in November. Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois released a statement reading, his four years as president made it clear that he was determined to put our country back on track and restore the soul of our nation. America will be forever grateful for all he has given to this country. You can read more reactions from local lawmakers on KSDK.com and be sure to catch the latest updates on air, online, and streaming on the 5 Plus app. Tonight, political analysts are weighing in on this watershed moment. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, has more from a panel of experts and their instant reactions. Mark. Democrats are off to the national convention, which begins just 29 days from now. So joining us to break down what happens next is Missouri Democratic uh, Party Chair Russ Carnahan. Good to have you with us. Also, Anita Mannion, political science expert and our political analyst. And Kevin O'Malley, former ambassador to Ireland under the Obama administration, close friend of President Biden. Thank you all for joining us. Mr. Carnahan, I want to ask you just how quickly this process is unfolding. What is the hurdle that Vice President Harris faces? We know she has the endorsement from President Biden, but I assume there has to be some whipping the votes here to actually get the delegates to fall in line. What are those conversations looking like? Take us behind the scenes. Yeah, those, uh, these conversations have been going on hour by hour, but it's such a jolt of energy uh, with the you know selfless action that President Biden took. Uh, and then immediately after that, Vice President Harris said she wanted to earn and win that nomination. So she's going to go out there and fight for it and lead. And so I think that's the moment people are looking for. We've even seen reports of record amounts of donations coming in online since this announcement. I think it's the kind of thing Democrats have been waiting for. What does that conversation look like? What is that challenge for Kamala Harris to ward off any challenges to her nomination, knowing that delegates are going to be free to vote their conscience? Well, the first thing she has going for her is the endorsement from President Biden, quickly followed by the Clintons, um, Congressional Black Caucus, other, and you can guarantee she's working the phones and shoring up those other endorsements. Notably, Obama and Pelosi Hatton um, came out and endorsed her. So the other thing she's doing is she's already started the petition to be a dele to be a candidate for the convention. So she's getting those delegates in order. She's shoring up the funding. So she's got all the things in place to try to make sure that she is the nominee. And, uh, Mr. Ambassador, we haven't seen a moment like this in American political history in more than half a century. What does this do to cement his legacy in uh, American presidential political history? So I, I think that um, most people have formed the opinion uh, that President Biden is a decent, caring person. And that is absolutely 100 percent true. And what what he's done today is put the country ahead of his own personal ambitions and his own personal feelings, uh, knowing that this is the best thing to do for the country. And I think that that will e even more, it will solidify to, to a greater degree uh, the fact that he is an honorable man and a patriot. All right. Our conversation with our roundtable continues in just about 45 minutes. But thanks to each of you for joining us tonight. Thank you. And as Mark said, you can catch Mark's expanded coverage on the record at 11 p.m. right after Sports Plus. And Mark will be at the historic Democratic National Convention next month. He'll have live reports from Chicago every night starting on August 19th. She was a familiar voice on the local airwaves for decades. Tonight, remembering radio personality Tammy Holland and the legacy she leaves behind. Pretty quiet for the most part, but there's one pulse shower or maybe a rumble of thunder north of Chesterfield, north of 64. Why storms like that have continued to develop and why we're going to be stuck in this pattern for the next three days. Tonight, St. Louis police are investigating a deadly shooting in North City. It happened about five hours ago on Maffitt Avenue near Euclid. Officers found a man dead. There's still no word on a suspect or a motive, but we'll keep you up to date as we learn more. Tonight, a 16-year-old accused of robbing two people in Soulard is recovering after being shot on the chest. This happened early Saturday morning near 9th and Russell as many bars were closing. Police say the teen and three others were armed with a rifle wearing ski masks and tried to rob two people in a car. One of the robbery victims shot the teen. He was later dropped off at the hospital. 
Tonight, the St. Louis community is mourning the loss of a popular and longtime radio personality. Tammy Holland died this weekend from cancer at the age of 53. Our Annie Crawl talked with co-workers about her trailblazing career and what she did for black women on the airwaves. She opened the doors for a lot of people. Actress and comedian Lady Ree the Funny Lady said Tammy Holland was an inspiration as one of the voices behind the first all-black female radio show at Foxy 106.9. Tammy really played a big role. I'm not going to cry. Not that, not that, not that. But she really played a big role in a lot of things that, you know, that people don't even know about. Tammy used this mic to co-host with Ree and Ms. Sinita starting at 6 a.m. on weekdays for four hours. Tammy was on air just weeks before her passing, Saturday morning, talking about what they'll miss most. She has this infectious laugh and um, everybody loves it. And then she would always bust out in some like harmonic song or something on the microphone. Battling stage four colon cancer that spread to her brain, Tammy died in the hospice surrounded by teenage daughter Meadow, family, and friends. She'll be remembered Monday on Foxy with a two hour tribute to call in and share stories. As I was fighting for my life, all I could think about was being remembered forever. Thank you, Tammy Holland, for a job well done. Reporting in Del Mar, Annie Crawl, Five on Your Side. And Tammy also worked here at Five on Your Side in the 90s as an overnight news anchor. Her family is planning a funeral for Tuesday. Spending their summer surrounded by history, a father and son duo making a difference by honoring the memory of people they've never even met. Making a Difference is sponsored by Midwest Bank Center. Some people spend their summer at the beach, others at the ballpark, but one family in St. Louis is spending theirs surrounded by history and armed with an unusual set of tools. In tonight's Making a Difference report, we introduce you to a duo that's giving new meaning to summer cleaning. No, that's the wrong edge. We have to keep going straight. A father and son are brushing up on history. Okay, so this is the right section. By brushing off the past. It's right there. Armed with brushes, scrapers, and a special cleaning solution. Oh, yeah. Zach Leonard and his 10-year-old son Lincoln yeah, have taken saying. on an unusual yeah. summer project at Calvary Cemetery. They're restoring long-neglected headstones to their former glory. Oh, yeah. I think it's important to preserve history because, I mean, if you don't, it's going to get lost, and to know your past is very important. What started as a curiosity became a calling. The Leonards came to Calvary Cemetery looking for roots. We have to really scrub around here. But found themselves planting seeds of remembrance. We found out that I had a great-grandfather, his great-great-grandfather, who was a veteran of World War I and World War II. That great-grandfather was James Leonard, buried somewhere in these sprawling grounds. But finding him was just the beginning. We could really only make out the AMES of the James. You couldn't really see Leonard. And we were like, we should clean this. This is heavy. <laughs> it is heavy. And so armed with determination and a bit of elbow grease, father and son set out to unveil other stories etched in stone. It's coming right off, isn't it? It's really an incredible feeling because you've come there to honor someone. And it's almost like they're coming to life a little bit. Calvary Cemetery has been around since 1854 and spans 470 acres with over 300,000 graves. It's the final resting place for many notable figures, including General William Tecumseh Sherman and Dred Scott. We will definitely have to spray more spray. But the Leonards aren't just focused on the famous. They're on a mission to honor those who served one headstone at a time. Yeah, that came out really well. We could barely see that at the beginning. For this father and son, it's more than just cleaning headstones. It's about connecting with history and each other. I hope that he learned that acts of 
kindness don't require an organization or don't require donations. Even if it's something small, everything makes a difference in some way and it can affect a lot of people. That's a, a good day. That was three today. Yeah. In a place where time stands still, two generations are ensuring that those who came before us will always shine bright. It's easy to do, really, if you're just willing to take the time. Between cleanings, Zach and Lincoln scour online records uncovering the stories of other veterans resting in Calvary Cemetery. And a reminder, if you know someone making a difference for others, let me know by email at mbush at ksdk.com. We're getting a live look downtown where it's clear, cool, and dry. Meteorologist Gary Frank, though, is tracking some hit and miss showers for the work week in our weather impact forecast. Right, I know, Gary? miss downtown hit in Chesterfield. Areas on 64 and close to the river or across to Weldon Spring. You can see that on the camera here that we have. And a few spots have seen that. It actually, it's rained there for a couple of hours off and on. That has since fizzled out. It looks all weird because it's really close to the radar site there that's just in Weldon Spring. However, most of that is quiet as we switch things back downtown. I'll show you the temps are actually still at 76 degrees. It's still a little mild. We did get to 82, but we're eight degrees below normal and right on the money in the morning again. We're still in the statistical hottest period of the year. So as we stayed away from 90 degrees in the afternoon, it was nice. And that trend continues again tomorrow because of all this cloud cover and unsettled weather. I don't think it's out of the question that a pop up shower will happen on the Metro East side tonight, but not all that different. Maybe waking up with a wet uh, car. That's it. A few clouds. Most of this is over, but the active pattern that is very slow moving you can see kind of these little mini circulations, this counterclockwise rotation and then the leading edge of this week cold front. We're kind of stuck in this and it's very slow moving. As a result, you'll see that we have these pop up showers during the heating of the day and even maybe just past. But that's where we're really going to see this during the afternoon hours. These bubble up, they rain themselves out and just like in Chesterfield, maybe close to an inch of rain. I think the main circulation to the south is going to be responsible for better chances Tuesday and Wednesday south of 44. I'll try to show you what this looks like here because I think overall we're going to see maybe if you pop up showers tomorrow, once again, not out of the question like the ones today. However, sun goes down, they fizzle out. Here's what it looks like Tuesday into Wednesday. And I think that we're going to see storms like this where 15 to 30 minutes on average keeps you wet at most. Some of us miss out on the rain completely. Expect those chances to go up in the afternoon, but a lot of dry time, a lot of sunshine and not all that much rain. There will be some anomalous periods where you'll get over an inch of rain in some cases. However, a lot of us get zero. Some of us will get less than a quarter of an inch as we return to 90 degrees. That unsettled pattern ends and we return to what we would expect as a summer heat by the weekend. Downtown roadblocks, the area drivers will want to veer away from on their morning commute for the next two weeks. Hello, it's Paul Cook, your traffic guy from today in St. Louis. Time for On The Move. Okay, new road construction in the city that you need to know about. And believe it or not, this time we're talking about I-44, not I-55, but it's still pretty close. The Missouri Department of Transportation has closed the ramp from westbound I-55 to Graboy for the next two weeks. During this time, crews will be working on curbing, drainage, and guardrails. Here's the thing, many drivers use this exit after coming across the Poplar Street Bridge from the Metro East during the very busy morning rush. So this could really bog you down. Here's the alternate route. Continue on westbound I-44 to the Jefferson exit. At that Jefferson exit, turn left at the base of the ramp, continue to rustle, and then follow that to grab one. Do you have all that? Well, I have it for you right now at KSDK.com. Even though this road work is on I-44, it's considered part of that huge I-55 project. I'll keep you in the know. Stay safe. Paul Cook, 5 on your side.
The Paris Olympics kick off this Friday. More than a hundred, more than 10,000 athletes from around the world will compete. Hundreds of thousands and millions even will be watching. And preps for the opening ceremonies are in full swing along the Seine, where athletes, including nearly a dozen from St. Louis, will float down the river towards the Eiffel Tower. Ahead of the game, security has been beefed up in the City of Light. More than 35,000 police officers are on standby to keep both athletes and spectators safe. You can watch the Olympic Games right here on 5 on your side. And to read more about the Olympians, you can just text 314-425-5355.